Namaskar. Today we are going to study Jain biology. Life in Jainism is characterized by soul. Souls are classified. Primarily, souls are of two types liberated souls and mundane souls. Liberated souls are bodiless and mundane souls are embodied. And mundane souls are further classified on the basis of body as follows. Number one classification is based on birth. Souls are of four types according to birth. Number one, infernal beings. Souls living in hell are infernal beings. These souls are subjected to physical and mental afflictions and suffer the rages of heat and cold. Their places are hot and cold, you know, where they live. And the second uh, class is animals. Animals are the biggest group amongst active souls. That means you know, there are also souls which are inactive, you know, and that we will study uh, in a subsequent lecture. All souls having one to four senses necessarily belong to animal category. Uh, what are these senses? We will study just now. These include organisms like worms, ants, fly, insects, etc. High animals have five senses. And these include terrestrial animals, aquatic beings and birds. The third class is human beings. Humans are highest developed beings as we already know. And human beings are of three kinds in Jainism. Number one, born on land of action. Humans born on land of action make their living by productive efforts and employ skills of agriculture, craft, trading, reading, writing, defending, self-protection, etc. as we do. So we live on a land of action, earth, you know. Then there are human beings born on land of inaction. These humans on land of inaction depend on special kinds of trees known as kalp rakshas in Jainism and they provide fruits, vegetables and other needs for their being. So these human beings uh, do not have skills and uh, they do not have the kind of uh, occupation as we have and uh, they entirely depend on trees for their needs. And the third kind of human beings are by birth, uh, aglo, the birth by agglutination, samurchan jeev as called in Jainism. Uh, souls taking birth by agglutination are humans only for the name's sake. They are microscopic and born in excreta and urine of human beings in a highly undeveloped state and have a very short span of life. You know. So these are the human beings only for the name's sake, otherwise they have no importance. Then the fourth class is uh, celestial, celestial beings, you know, uh, the, the beings who live in heavens. Their bodies are made from protein material, you know, and uh, the bodies are not visible. So the heavenly beings are invisible. These beings enjoy a high degree of pleasure and prosperity and possess supernatural powers of many kinds. So uh, their, their life is very comfortable. And, uh, you know, they have many natural powers, you know, they can see at a distance, hear from distance, they can know uh, 
uh, the universe, you know, in many aspects and so on. They have a long span of life as compared to what we have. On expiry of lifespan, a celestial being is not born in heaven again. So being is a being who is in heaven now uh, will not have a life again in heaven, the next life in heaven. Similarly, infernal beings, you know, the beings who are living in hell now will not have the next life in hell again. Both of these kind souls are reborn in the middle lobe, uh, earth-like planet. What is the middle lobe? We will study in the next lecture. Humans and animals are found in middle lobe only and they are reborn in any part of lobe, any part of universe. So you, the we can uh, have a rebirth in any part of universe, but that is not so in the case of heavenly beings and uh, beings in hell. Out of the four types, human beings form the smallest group. We are in the uh, smallest number. Informal beings are innumerable times the number of human beings. And celestial beings are innumerable times the number of infernal beings. And animals form the largest group and are infinite times the number of celestial beings. This shows the importance uh, how precious is the human life is, you know, because we are in such a small number and uh, a soul has to take birth in uh, this kind of condition, you know. There is another way to classify souls and uh, this classification is uh, six class, you know. And uh, this kind of classification is unique to Jainism. No other philosophy have this kind of uh, description. Out of the six types or six classes, five are immobile beings, you know the beings uh, who do not move on their own. The first one is earth body soul. Earth is the body of earth body souls, you know. So for example, earth, salt, gold, mica, and all other minerals, etc. are earth body souls. So Janis believe that, you know, earth has consciousness, earth has soul. And uh, all the ores, you know, and other uh, materials which are found, on, found in earth also have soul, you know. So they are living beings. They have consciousness before processing according to Jainism. Because this earth and minerals and other material, you know, which are found in earth are normally processed to get a finished product, you know. So after uh, processing, you know, there is no life. So the things which we see, objects, you know, which we have in our daily life, have no life. Uh, but when they are found on earth, they have life, they have consciousness. The total number of earth body souls are innumerable. The earth body souls mainly fall in two groups. Subtle and gross, you know. So the earth body coal can be found in a micro form or in a gross form. The subtle earth body souls are not visible to naked eyes, you know. They are so small that we can't see them. And the gross souls have bodies uh, made up of large visible aggregates, you know. So we can see them. The minimum lifespan of earth body is less than one Indian hour. A term in Indian hour means 48 minutes. So the life, the minimum lifespan can be few minutes. And the maximum span is 42,000 years. You know, they can have very, very long life. Earth body souls are destroyed by cold, heat, salt, acid, alkali, and electric charge. These are the things by which, you know, the life in earth is destroyed. 
both groups of earth body souls that means the subtle and the gross can be present in a developed or underdeveloped state uh this is a technical term here developed and underdeveloped developed means you know they have the power to have a full body and underdeveloped means you know they don't have those powers and the body is not formed properly and uh, you know they have no life uh, uh, significant life you know that kind of thing then the next is water body soul you know the water as found in nature is also supposed to have life so the water also has soul you know for example dew ice fog etc are water body souls of gross type you know because we see them so water also has consciousness and the water body souls are innumerable in the universe they are destroyed in the same way as earth body souls that is heat cold acid alkali and so on uh the water body souls are also destroyed by these means before processing water has consciousness and life you know normally we take processed water you know so that processed water doesn't have life but before processing the water has life uh, processing that is the handling of raw water in, in any manner whatsoever inflicts pain on these organisms and is therefore a sinful act so if you are processing water for drinking purpose it is a sinful act you know uh in the in jain philosophy but of course as we can't live without that so this is uh, inavoidable unavoidable uh, but uh, at the same time we do incur sin <coughs> when we are processing water by any method minimum life span of water body soul is less than 1 indian hour that is few minutes and the maximum life span is 7000 years again a very long period then the fourth class is fire body souls fire is the body of these souls you know and some examples are uh, burning fuel sparks flames meteorites etc they are all fire body souls these souls are also innumerable in the universe and they are also destroyed the same way as the earth body souls earlier described and they possess consciousness before destruction their minimum life span is again few minutes and the maximum uh, life span is 3 days the next one is air body souls so the air is also supposed to have life you know in jainism you know. and the examples are hurricanes typhoons wind storms uh they are all gross body souls you know because we are we can see them they have a gross body air body souls are also innumerable in the universe and they have a consciousness before processing you know so uh wind in the raw form uh has life you know if you process them you know, by heating cooling or air conditioning and so on uh, you destroy the life or even fire and so on the minimum life span is less than 1 indian hour few minutes and the maximum span is 3000 years in this case and the next one is plant body souls so jenny believes right from beginning that plants and trees have soul you know they are living beings so all plants and all vegetation are plant body souls plant body souls are of two kinds i mentioned this earlier also solitary body soul or individual body soul and a common body soul a soul who is the soul owner of the body is the solitary body soul you know there is one soul one body when more than one soul has a common physical body the plant is called common body soul you know and in such cases breathing process food age age and body are common to souls 
living in the body. So all souls have a common body and all these processes which I have just now mentioned are also common to all souls. Examples of uh, solitary body plant souls are trees for, for example, mango, banyan tree and other trees like this. Then grass, you know, soft grass, any kind of grass. Green vegetables, like spinach, etc. All green vegetables. Plants growing in water, low force, etc. They are all examples of solitary body plants. Then all bulbous roots, roots of various sorts and sprouts are common body plants. You know. These kinds of uh, vegetation or vegetables or soils are common body plants. You know. uh, so for example, uh, onion, garlic, radish, ginger, turmeric, etc. Uh, they are common body plants. You know. uh, and this is a very important concept in Jainism. You know. uh, Jainists believe in non-violence. You know. So uh, no soul or no living being must be killed. And from that standpoint or from that point of view, uh, if you have a solitary body plant, you know, then you commit less of sin. And if you consume uh, common body plants, you know, then you commit more sin. So common body plants are uh, uh, forbidden in uh, Jainism, you know, the true Jains will not eat common body plants. Plants again are of subtle and gross type. The above described are all gross plants, you know. The subtle vegetable or vegetation plants are called nigod. I used this term in the last lecture also. They are minute form of microorganisms, you know. Very, very subtle form, very small form, which are not visible to our eyes. Micro microbiology also regards some types of viruses as plant life. This finding of science is in agreement with the Jain belief, you know. Some virus, not all virus, have, are equated with plant life. According to Jainism, infinite number of negod live in a micro body. For instance, a tip of needle is supposed to accommodate infinite nigod jeeves. So the nigoda organisms or nigod jeeves or nigod souls are so 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 small that you know they can there can be an infinite number of such living beings on the tip of a needle, you know. So imagine their size. Minimum lifespan of a plant body soul is less than Indian hour, that is few minutes and the maximum span is 10,000 years, you know. All plant body souls have consciousness before processing. So, if you have a vegetable uh, and if you have fruits and things like this, even grains, grains are of course processed and they do not have life, but green vegetable would have life, you know. Green fruits would have life, you know. But once they are processed, if they are cut, they have no life. If they are dried, they have no life. Then a sixth class is mobile beings. The, the last five types which we discussed were immobile beings, you know. And then the sixth class is mobile beings, you know, people like us, I mean the, uh, the, the living beings like us. And these beings can move backward and forward they can contract and expand, uh, produce sound, move around, uh, run in defense, get frightened, etc. All these are these are the characteristics of mobile beings. So all infernal beings, all celestial beings, celestial celestial beings, all animals and all human beings are mobile beings. And uh, these mobile beings have two to four senses are called deficient beings and uh, I give example here uh, who are what are two touch or two sense beings you know 
and uh, you remember the immobile beings also have a sense of touch they have a sense only one sense and sense of touch all immobile beings so plants and vegetable for example have one sense of touch then we coming to the mobile beings you know so the minimum level of a mobile being is two sense beings you know so they have two senses the sense of touch and sense of taste that means they eat food you know and the example are small insect shell conch shell earthworm and worms of are some examples of two sense beings you know so these are two sense beings uh, that means they have a sense of touch and sense of taste that means they eat food then the next higher class is three sense beings you know uh, so they will have three senses one touch touch another taste another smell you know. uh, examples are ants bed bugs scorpions pests louse etc and uh, they are these are the examples of three sense beings you know then we have four sense beings you know so they will have four senses uh, touch taste smell and vision uh, examples are flies mosquitoes black beetle bee locust etc these are four sense beings you know then we have five sense beings so these beings are born either in womb or by the process of agglutination you know so there are two ways in which the five sense five sense beings can be born and the fifth sense is hearing you know so they have all the five senses uh the subhuman vertebrates are three kinds you know so we will talk of human and subhuman beings so the subhuman vertebrates are of three kinds one aquatic animals like fishes turtles tortoise crocodiles alligators whales dolphin etc they are these aquatic animals are five sense beings some of them are born in a born as eggs and some are brought forth as fully developed young animals so there are two kinds of birth either born as egg or as a fully developed animal uh, their varieties is caused by color smell etc uh, and they count in thousands so there are thousands of varieties of aquatic beings then there are land animals like quadrupeds reptiles and later again the reptiles are again of two kinds snakes and lizards and we again have a different sub class of these varieties quadrupeds are of four kinds you know uh, that is on the basis of shape shape of their feet for example solid angle animals have a solid hoof like horses horses have a solid hoof then biangular animals with cleft hoof like cattle multiangular animals like elephants and animals having toes with nails in like lions so these are different uh, kinds again in quadrupeds then the reptiles are of two kinds those which are limbless and walk on their breasts like snakes pythons etc and number 2 those which have short limbs and walk on their arms uh, as all variety of lizards uh, and other animals which are given here all varieties of rodents such as rats mice uh, porcupines etc and then frogs crows mangoes and many others you know so they are of uh, this particular kind in the case of reptiles some are brought forth as eggs while some are born as fully developed young ones you know then there is a third class birds and flying animals aerial animals you know the birds and flying animals are divided in four types again so these are of four types those with membranes wings and bats as birds you know so they have a membrane wings 
and those with feathered wings, you know, common birds, those with wings which never open, you know, the uh, penguins, you know, they have their wings reduced to a scaly flippers with which they cannot fly but can swim underwater, you know, and those with wings which never close. Then based on type of birth, the mobile beings are of eight types. Oviparous, they are born from eggs like birds. And vertebrates, born without placenta, as, uh, such as elephants. Viviparous, they are born with placenta, cows, humans. Fermentation origin, you know, worms and bacteria produced in curd, etc by fermentation. The sweat origin, produced from sweat, such as loves, etc. And birth by agglutination, uh, they have asexual birth, such as flies, ants, etc. So, uh, it is believed in Jainism that these uh, kinds of insects, you know, flies, ants, etc., uh, they take birth asexually. Then, there are sprouting animals, you know, uh, they are produced below Earth's surface, such as locusts. Then instantaneously manifested body. There are, they are non-fetus beings, such as celestial and infernal beings, you know. So they are, when they take birth, you know, they are in a grown-up form, you know. There is no growth kind of phenomena in these beings, you know. They are, they, when they take birth, they take birth as a fully grown-up beings. All creatures having one to four senses and five senses without mind and infernal beings are necessarily hermaphrodites. You know. So this is a belief in Jainism that such beings are hermaphrodites. You know. They are produced as actually. Celestial beings have male and female category and there is no hermaphrodite there. And the human beings and animals have all three categories. That is, in our case, you know, there can be male, female or a hermaphrodite. Then uh, the uh, life is also classified based on birthplace again and species, uh, the term which is used in science. In Jainism, it's called Yoni. Yoni is a birthplace, a term which you should remember, Yoni. And there are 8.4 million birthplaces of Yoni in Jainism, you know. And the number of species is much greater than uh, this uh, number of birthplaces, as uh, in one birthplace, Many births can take place, many species can be born. For example, dung, cow dung, say for example, you know, where worms are produced, insects are produced. So many types of uh, life is produced in a cow dung, but the cow dung then is regarded as one birthplace, you know. So in one birthplace, there can be many species. So then we can uh, have uh, the, the total number of birthplaces and yonis are defined and they are given here in this table. Uh, so, say starting from earth body, earth body souls, you know. The earth body souls are uh, uh, 0.7 million and uh, the number of species can be, can be 1.2 million. And that way, uh, I have given here the numbers for water body souls, fire body souls, air body souls, common body plants, solitary body plants, two sense organisms, three sense organism, four sense organism, and five sense animals. And here again, uh, there is a subclassification, aquatic creatures, birds, terrestrial animals, cre creeping reptiles, armed reptiles, then human beings, you know, 1.4 million kinds of birth and 1.2 million uh, kinds of species. Uh, 
you know you may wonder you know how human beings can eat so many varieties so many kinds you know they are in fact classified according to the primary attributes like color taste uh, smell touch and so on and their grades you know so on that basis you know uh, there can be various types of human beings the informal beings and celestial beings are also being classified and the total birth places is 8.4 millions and the total number of species is, is little more than 20 millions then there are two important concepts uh, in jainism you know uh, what we call as a biopotential paryati and uh, vital power so i'll uh, very briefly go through this uh, you can see the details in my book so the bio potentials are the necessary preparation for life in fact you know before the uh, life is developed uh, the soul has to have many powers you know in order that you know the body is a uh, fully constructed and there is a fully grown up life so these powers are known as a bio potential powers and there is another kind of power vital powers which we call as prana uh, and this we will uh, discuss after this so the bio potential is the power of biological and physio- physiological development possessed by a soul so when the soul takes rebirth a new body is to be formed uh, using suitable materials you know so that uh, requires power the power to develop this new body is called bio potential and there are six kinds of uh, bio potentials food bio potential body bio potential uh, the, the the meanings are given here food by potential would mean that you know the soul is able to uh, in intake or uh, consume a proper food and so on by a potential body by a potential means the proper type of body is constructed the details are given here and then sense organ by a potential so that the sense organs are formed respiration by a potential so that the respiration system is formed speech by a potential the speech system is formed and my mind by a potential means the mind is formed you know so they are all by a potential powers of the soul uh, which a soul must possess before the new life is properly formed and if uh, this uh, powers are fully manifested then we call that the the life is fully developed or the being is fully developed if these powers are not fully manifested we will say that it is underdeveloped life you know and that life in fact does not live long then there are vital powers what is known as prana you know? so the vital powers are essential for life these carry consciousness and intelligence of soul to gross body uh, there is you know one important question you know which can be raised and must be raised how the consciousness and intelligence of soul is transferred to body the soul is a non physical entity and the body is a material entity and how these attributes of consciousness and intelligence and so on are transferred from a non physical entity to entity to a physical body is a question the may, this is in fact happening this is happening through prana you know, the prana is a intermediate uh, structure that connects uh, the soul and body and transfer these attributes from soul to body and there are uh, uh, 10 types of prana one is known as age prana or ayush prana and this power this prana keeps the body alive 
for a predetermined time units and when this terminate prana terminates death occurs you know so so long as age prana is there the body is alive you know and this prana terminates the body is dead then the respiration prana swachh swachh prana you know and this power enables the body to breathe air essential for life you know for survival and discharge the carbon carbon dioxide so this function takes place because of respiration prana then body prana uh, this prana uh, provides energy for metabolic activity in the body for growth and maintenance of form you know so because our you know we live because of metabolic activity is which an essential component of our life and that is because of the body bal prana you know so this prana is uh, in fact discharging this function then speech bal prana and this prana is responsible for production of speech uh, so this we have a speech uh, so long as the speech prana is there you know then the mind bal prana so when this prana is there then the mind is functioning the mind functions so long as this prana is present you know and i as i told you mentioned in the last class also mind in genuine is different from brain you know and we will talk about mind in detail later then there are sense organ pranas you know and we have five senses and therefore there are five sense pranas you know so these are the these pranas are the power behind functioning of our five senses you know the our senses function if these pranas are the or there so it's do two important concepts you know in jainism one by a potential or paryapti so that the body is properly formed and number two we have vital powers so that the bodily properly functions you know so the two important concepts uh, in jainism and uh, these uh, are physical vital powers you know dravya prana and then there are uh, bhav prana or metaphysical vital powers which are possessed by soul so it is basically because of soul that we have these prana you know and which uh, are responsible for functioning of the body so originally uh, the power comes from soul the bhav prana soul has all the powers you know and these powers are responsible for construction of the body for functioning of the body and so on mundane souls possess both physical vital powers and metaphysical vital powers both dravya prana and bhav prana but the liberated soul also have prana but they are only metaphysical bhav prana you know, because they do not have body so they do not have dravya prana vital powers are connected to bioelectricity in the body you know uh, this is uh, uh, just to understand you know how the connection is made between soul and body the prana and body you know so as far as the science is concerned you know our body is functioning because of bioelectricity and it can be assumed that the pranas are responsible for generating or creating bioelectricity in the body if there were no prana there would be no bioelectricity in the body would not function vital power vital powers are fundamental basis of life as i explained to you and uh, uh, without vital powers and biopotential powers uh, cannot manifest vital powers in sufficient measure are needed for full manifestation of biopotential powers so i have described to you today uh, jain biology classification of various kinds of life and then we also discussed some important concepts which are necessary for our life thank you